Hello everyone, how are you today? Here is the part two of my videos about verifying a Linux installation media. So if you haven't seen my first video and you're wondering what a checksum is, what SHA256 is, I invite you to watch the part one. The video link will be in the description. In that previous video, I also explained how to calculate the checksum of a file, but I also explained why only calculate the checksum of an ISO file is not enough to validate a .ISO file. So, for this second video, I will show you in detail the process of validating the .iso file of Linux Mint. After downloading Linux Mint, there is a step you can take. It is to verify that you have indeed downloaded the correct ISO file, that it is really the one that the Linux Mint team intended to distribute. As I mentioned in my previous video, the file manager in Linux Mint already automatically integrates the process of validating another Linux Mint ISO file. But here, I will show you how to validate it if you are using a different operating system. For example, if you are using Debian Linux or Microsoft Windows. I will start to show from a Linux machine. If we go into the download page of Linux Mint, by clicking on the download button, we get into the download page. On that page, we have an integrity and authenticity section explaining what I mentioned in my previous video. Anyone can produce fake ISO files, and it is your responsibility to verify that you have downloaded the official ISO files. They provide things and instructions to validate your Linux Mint download. We will do this together on this video, and I will explain each steps. So we will download these two files. In the case of SHA-256-SUM.TXT, if I do a simple click, it opens the file in the web browser. So you have to right click on it and click on save link as... In my case, I will put it to my download folder. We will also download the SHA-256-SUM.TXT.GPG file. Again. If I do a simple click, it opens the file in the web browser. I will click on Save Link As. I will put it in my Downloads folder too. As I mentioned earlier, if you want to validate a Linux Mint ISO file in Linux Mint, the file manager in Linux Mint already automatically integrates everything needed to verify the checksum of a Linux Mint ISO file. And this can be done without downloading the two previous files, the .txt and the .gpg that I just downloaded. The tool will automatically download and use them to validate. But if you are on another Linux distribution, in my case, I am using Debian Linux. We need to follow the instructions indicate here. Download the two files that I just downloaded a few seconds ago. In my case here, I already have the Linux Mint ISO file downloaded. So the first step is to open a terminal window and go into the directory containing these three files. I will use my file manager to open a terminal directly in the correct directory I want. Otherwise, you can use the cd command to navigate to the desired directory. In the case of Linux, you can see that I will show you these instructions in command line. It has the advantage of being usable regardless of the Linux distribution and graphical interface you are currently using and without having to download some tools because the majority of the popular Linux distribution already have these command integrated. As we can see in the names of the file containing the checksum for Linux Mint, it indicates that they use the SHA-256 protocol to calculate the checksum of the file and the command to calculate the checksum of a file with this protocol is this one, followed by its option-b and the ISO file you want to validate. In my case, it is Linux Mint 22 Cinnamon 64-bit so this calculates the checksum of the .iso file. It does exactly the same things as when I used the file manager earlier to calculate the checksum. So the result is returned here. The strategy is to compare it with the one indicated in the SHA-256-SUM file. 
So if I compare here to here, we see that it is exactly the same fingerprint for both. So this validates that it is the correct ISO file, the download was successfully done, and nothing has been added to it this file. In this text file, you have three lines, one for each Linux Mint version, one for the Cinnamon version, one for the Mate version, and one for the XFC version. This is also for the Linux Mint 22 versions. If you want to validate another version, you will need to find the sha256sum.txt file for the desired version. But as I mentioned in my previous video, just doing this previous step does not allow you to detect the case where someone has modified both the .iso and the sha256sum.txt files on the Linux Mint server. So how do we verify that? It is by using the gpg command, which is integrated into most Linux distributions. So in my case, Debian Linux already has it installed. Ubuntu Linux have it too, and Linux Mint too. So the first step is to import the Linux Mint signed key. The documentation page perfectly indicates the command needed to verify it. You can copy and paste it into the terminal, or you can write it by hand if you are very patient. A message indicates that the Linux Mint key has been imported. We can use this command to check that it has been properly imported. So this is an optional command, but it validates that it has been imported correctly. In my case, it returns something, so it shows us that it has been imported. Otherwise, it would have indicated that there was no existing key for this fingerprint. You can also verify that the information written on this page is indeed the same as the one provides on your terminal screen. We can see here that these are the same codes. And the last step is to use the gpg command to verify the sha256 file based on the information from that file. It shows us that there is a good signature with the RSA key here, which is the same one that was indicated here. You can see here, it is written, warning. This key is not certified with a trusted signature. This is just because this signature is not known by my computer. It does not mean that the Linux Mint source is not trustable. It simply means that our computer does not recognize it and cannot certify that it is a trusted signature. One thing I want to show you is that if I modify just a single character in the checksum file, the same validation will return an error. So that instructions were for Linux, now how do we perform the same steps on a Windows system? To show you that, I am back on the Linux Mint download page. I will choose my edition. I will go with the Cinnamon edition, just like we did earlier on my Linux machine. So as we did, we need to download the two files. The strategy is the same, right click on it and click on save link as. I will place these two files in my download folder. So they are next to my ISO file that I had already downloaded earlier. Now we will go to the same documentation page which explains how to verify the Linux Mint ISO file. But here we have a small section on how to verify an .iso file on Windows. In the Linux Mint forum, some people have written an excellent article explaining very well how to do it. But we will still go through the procedure together if you need help on the process and if you want to know what these steps are doing. As I mentioned earlier, Windows does not integrate the GPG tool by default. So if I run that command, it will be an unrecognized command. Unless you have a Linux system installed on Windows, by example via WSL. 
In my case, this is a Windows 11 system just after the installation and the Linux options are not installed. And just for fun, if I run the gpg command, it does not work. It is an unknown command. But don't worry, it's very simple and lightweight to install. So for that, we will install gpg for win. Now, if I scroll down the page, I have the installation binaries for GPG. We see a section for Windows, and as I mentioned earlier, it's GPG4 Win. I will click on this link here. It will download GPG4 Win. If you want, you can contribute to the project by making a donation. Otherwise, just check zero and click on the download button. The download will begin. It's a 33 megabyte file. So, once downloaded, I will open my downloads folder. And we can see that GPG4Win is there, I will install it. Just to clarify, if you already have GPG integrated into your system for any reason, whether you have installed a Linux system or know another way to have GPG on Windows, and you have it already installed, it will not be necessary to install gpg for win I am just providing this information for the one who wants to verify the installation media and does not have any of that installed. So gpg for win is installed. I will not open Cleopatra. Instead, I will use the command line. So if I try again, this is the gpg command, it did not work because I need to close my terminal window and reopen it. And if I enter the gpg command, this time it does not tell me that the command does not exist. Of course, only entering gpg does not work because it needs options and parameters. So I will press Ctrl plus C to cancel. So, we are ready to do the procedure to verify the .iso file on Windows, now that I have gpg installed. In my download folder, which contains my .iso file and my two checksum verification files, I will right-click and open a terminal window in this directory. Now I am in my downloads folder. Again, if your terminal window is not on the good directory, you can use the cd command to navigate through the folder. So the first step will be to calculate the checksum of the Linux Mint ISO file. Earlier on Linux, it was with the sha256 sum command. Here on Windows, it is certutil dash hash file followed by the name of the ISO file. So in my case, it will be Linux Mint. I will press the tab key to autocomplete the name. After we need to enter the protocol, we want to use to calculate the checksum. So it returns a result that starts with 7a and ends with 8f. Now we can open the SHA-256 sum file and compare it. So for me, it is the cinnamon version that I want to compare. And if I compare here to here, we have exactly the same fingerprint. So that is a very good new. But like I mentioned earlier, we have just verified and compared the checksum of the .iso file. But nothing confirmed to us that this SHA-256 sum file is the real one provided by the Linux Mint team. As example, if a hacker has changed it. So to do that, we also need to validate the checksum file with a GPG signature that the Linux Mint team has and provides on their website. So we will copy and paste the commands that are on the website. I will just open a terminal window again. I accidentally closed it. So this command will download the Linux Mint key. So the Linux Mint key has been successfully imported. Next, we will use the command gpg dash dash verify, followed by the name of the gpg file and the name of the text file we want to verify. 
and it returns exactly as it did earlier when I did it on Linux. It is a good signature from the signed key of Linux Mint. As before, this key is not known by my computer, so it writes that it cannot be certified as a trusted signature. So if you get that error, it is normal. Just like before, if I modify the content of the SHA-256SUM file, and if I run the same command again, the result is now bad signature from the Linux Mint signature. So by doing all of this, it first guarantees me that the ISO file is indeed the one provides by the Linux Mint team. And then by running the gpg command, it also guarantees that I have indeed downloaded the correct SHA-256SUM file. So that was how you can verify a Linux Mint ISO file. If you want to perform this verification for another Linux distribution, the instructions should similar. You can rely on what I just explained to guide you through the process and understand each step on the process of validation of another Linux distribution ISO file. If you really cannot understand the instructions for validating another Linux distribution, for example, you are trying to verify the Fedora Linux medias and are lost on the instructions, and the instructions provides on this video doesn't help you with the Fedora ISO file validation, feel free to write a comment and depending on the request, I will make a targeted video for each Linux distribution about this subject. So that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful and that you enjoyed it. Don't hesitate to write in the comments what you thought about it. Normally, do you do these steps after downloading a Linux installation file? Have a great day. Bye-bye.